Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster, and I thought I'd do a slightly different video for you today. Um, it's basically just going to be rambling on at the camera. Um, and what I wanted to talk about was our perception of traditional craftsmen, uh, wood carvers, wood crafters, you know, you name it. And I think we've really got a, a very kind of rose tinted view of what these people did. Um, and, and not so much how they did it, but why they did it, what their motivations were, that kind of thing. Um, and by traditional craftspersons, I mean sort of pre-industrial revolution, um, you know, basically doing kind of what I do on my channel and what a lot of you do, which is carving and, and making things out of wood by hand without the benefit of any kind of machinery and that kind of thing. Um, now, it's something that we all do, and I think I'm safe to say we all enjoy it. It's a hobby. Um, and a lot of us do it for various different reasons. Some of us want to do it because we enjoy making things. Um, some of us do it because we want to kind of rekindle some of these traditional crafts that um, you know are, are basically dying out. Um, and, and that's all well and good. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But just through talking to a few people recently, I think, and I, I myself have been guilty of this in the past, I, I think we've got this really obscure view of traditional craftspeople and the fact that you know some people seem to think that they were real die-hard you know traditionalists for lack of a better term you know this is how I make things therefore this is how I will always do it um, whereas in fact I can pretty much guarantee if you were to um, you know go back in time and apart from maybe being burned at the stake for witchcraft but let's, let's put that to the side for a second if you were to offer the use of um, you know, a powered lathe or a bandsaw or an electric sander or something like that to a craftsperson who was maybe working out of their house or maybe working out of a small workshop um, who is essentially producing something to sell as an income and that's really what these guys were doing you know people that were, that were turning wood on, on pole lathes people that were hand carving spoons and bowls and these kind of things weren't doing it for the joy of it, which is essentially what we do. Um, they were doing it to make an income. Um, and I think that's where some of us go wrong a little bit, is you know, you have got some people who are really, really die hard, um, you know, don't want to use any kind of power tools. And I, generally speaking, I'm one of those, I might pick up a power drill now and again, just to put a, a, a hole into something, or to maybe get a hole to start off some uh, a piece of carving or something like that. Um, I do it quite often with my cooksers. Now, to be fair, I normally use a hand drill um, as a sort of a, a you know a twisty mechanical hand drill rather than a power drill. Um, but I have used power drills in the past, and I'm sure I will do again. Um, and again, I'm not you know saying that that's right or wrong. They're, they're, you know, each to their own, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but there are some people who do genuinely believe that the traditional guys would have, would have turned their nose up at it, would have, would have said, oh, no, I don't want to use any of this kind of stuff. I, you know, I make it in this manner. Now, there are some niche markets out there, you know, anything that's either got the label handmade, um, you know, anything along those lines tends to go for a fairly good price. Um, and the reason for that is this, in this day and age of mass production, um, you know, making lots of things out of plastics and those kind of things, something that's got that traditional handmade value to it is, you know, for lack of a better term, quite valuable. Um, and, you know, people will pay a premium for that kind of thing. But there's only so many people that can do that and market that before people start going, do you know what, it's easier for me just to pop down to the shop around the corner and pick up a bowl that's been made in a factory, whether it's plastic or ceramic, you know, maybe even wood, um, because it's easier, it's cheaper, it's more efficient and more effective. Um, but going back to, I suppose, the point of this topic is that I genuinely don't believe that the woodcrafters of old uh, would have had any issue with modernising if some of these modern materials were available to them. I mean, we know there were people that were powering uh, things like lathes from water wheels if they happened to be near a river or a stream where they were able to do so and they had the technological know-how to create that. You know, we know that people were using various methods in order to produce or, or, or more efficiently and more effectively produce the wares that they were making. 
because at the end of the day, if you are relying on this as either your sole or at least a part income, you want to make as many of these things as you possibly can, as quickly as you can. Don't get me wrong, you know, to a high quality or at least a reasonable quality. Um, but, but again, I think one of the things a lot of people also forget is that a lot of these craftspeople, especially when we start going back, you know, a hundred or more years, you know, they you weren't like the, the big towns that we had today. Yes, there were cities, there were big towns, um, but there was a lot of rural areas that would have had one person who, were make, who was making, let's say, bowls and plates and wooden spoons. And you know, I think another thing to remember is that a lot of people just in general, especially in rural communities, would have had the facility and I think the knowledge to make their own wares. You know, if somebody broke a wooden platter or somebody broke a wooden bowl, the likelihood is there's somebody in that household who would have the, the relevant knowledge and tools and equipment to be able to make those things. Um, now, I'm not saying everybody did, and I suspect that, you know, like I say, you would have had sort of maybe one person in a small rural village, um, you know, who would have been making these kind of things. The similar way as you would have maybe had a blacksmith or a farrier who would have made things out of metal. Um, now, again, I mean, that's another topic in itself, but, you know, the blacksmiths and the farriers of old, um, you know, they weren't the kind of people, as, as a lot of people seem to think, that were, were making swords and spears and, you know, maybe arrowheads and that kind of thing for kind of localised hunting. Um, um, but, you know, they were making nails, they were making hinges, they were making horseshoes. Um, you know, and, and that's what is sort of the purpose of this video, if you like, is just saying, you know, there are a lot of misconceptions, I feel, about traditional craftspeople. Um, and, you know, they would, how can I put this? They, they were doing what they did because that's what they needed to do. You know, that was their job. Um, but I genuinely think that these people really would have bitten your arm off if you had given them a, a better, more efficient, less costly, you know, however you want to put it, way of manufacturing these products. Now, I take, and I'm sure you do as well, I take a great deal of pleasure coming into my workshop, taking a, a lump of wood and turning it into something. Now, I don't sell any, uh, sell any of the stuff that I make. You know, I normally give it away to people that I know. Um, and it's just, for me, it's the joy of doing it. But I can be pretty sure, and again, again, this goes back to this kind of rose-tinted view, um, you know, if I had to do this as a living, um, I think I would very quickly become not only bored, um, but probably slightly resentful of the fact that I needed to churn out five bowls in a week or five bowls in a day, maybe. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure what the call was for these kind of things. I mean, obviously, they're everyday items. Um, you know, on the one side, everybody needs them. On the other side, if they're well made and well looked after, they should last quite a while. Um, but, you know, that's kind of what I'm getting at is, is that these people... Um, as, as much as there's something to aspire to and their level of skill and their level of craftsmanship um, is certainly way beyond anything I can produce. But at the same time, um, you know, these people were doing this not for the love of doing it. I'm sure there were some people who were very, very proud of their wares, um, and rightly so. But they weren't doing it because they wanted to do it. They were doing it to generate an income. They were doing it, I mean, you know, maybe in a very small rural community, you know, where um, you know cash, you know, physical money was not maybe something that was, um, you know, very readily available. And, you know, we know this from historical, um, you know, texts and things like that. Is that a lot of these very poor rural communities didn't have cash, and what cash they did have, they would save it for when either something like a tinker came around, or for when they had to go off to a, a larger settlement or a larger city. Um, you know, to get supplies and that kind of thing. But what they would do is barter. So maybe you would have one of these guys who would make, I don't know, a dozen bowls or platters or whatever it might be. Um, and he would barter that with someone who was growing crops and he would barter it with someone who was tanning leather and so on and so forth. Um, and again, I think, you know, I, I think, I suppose one of the other points of this video is that, you know, we idealise this kind of way of life, this very rural, you know, either whether it's bushcraft, you know, I think that's probably another topic in and of itself. And I, I may actually do another video similar to this talking about bushcrafters, um, you know, the pioneers, frontiersmen, that kind of thing. Um, but again, it's another one, and, and the same with the, the woodcrafters. You know, we, we really idealise these people. Um, and I'm not saying that's wrong by any means, but I think we kind of forget, and we have this sort of romantic image, if you like, of 
you know, people going into a workshop, you know, donning their leather apron and, and you know, whiling away the hours making these wonderful wooden products. Um, and I think, do you know what, I'd love that. I'd love to go back in time 500 years in a little rural hamlet and do nothing but woodcraft, uh, carving and crafting, you know, for, for the, to the end of my days. And actually, when you think about it, it's probably not all it's cracked up to be. Um, so yeah, I mean, those were just my thoughts, guys. It was just a video that has been on my mind for a little bit recently. It's a bit of a ramble. There's not really any point to it, apart from the fact of saying, you know, I, th I think it's something that we're maybe all a little bit guilty of, is, is you know, romanticising and, and having a bit of a rose-tinted view on some of the traditional crafts that we carry out um, in a very modern mindset. Um, and, and I think you know, we're doing a disservice to those people of old by thinking of what they do and what we're doing in our modern uh, sort of from, or with our modern brain rather than thinking of it from a sort of historical standpoint and actually you know yes a lot of the tools that we use are similar I mean, I'm sure the ones we use today are better quality and better well maybe, maybe better maybe, maybe not um, I've never never had a chance to play with any real historical examples of um, uh, you know, wood carving tools though a lot of them are, the, the ones I use are based on sort of designs from older periods that kind of thing um, but certainly the steel that we use nowadays and the tempering process and whatever is better um, but you know I don't think that these people would have had the same enthusiasm and taken the same enjoyment from wood carving as a hobby as we do it um, because it was essentially a way of life for them um, but anyway guys, I've rambled on long enough, I'll be really interested to hear your views on this. Um, as I say, it's, it's kind of a video without a point really, apart from the fact that I just wanted to have a bit of a, bit of a ramble about my thoughts on traditional woodcarvers and, and how we think of them. Um, but yeah, I'll be really interested to hear your views, and as usual, comments and questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks guys.